Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel where we create photorealistic assets together. Today I have a very fun video for you guys. I recently finished this character and it was a very fun creation process for me and I also learned a lot. I went through the whole process of creating a character from beginning to the end and I thought it would be a valuable video for you guys as well if I show you the general workflow of how to create a character like this. We are going to be talking about the main steps and we are going to focus on the face. So the first thing I had to do with the character, of course, is sculpt the face. Uh, I'm reusing an old geometry that I did another project for. The general typology is pretty good, but I ended up still having a little bit of issue around the eye end, around the mouth. So I ended up uh, still retypologized after the sculpt. For your own character, you can do it like me, use something that you already done. Um, you can choose to use the Z2 inside of ZBrush, the female face that's already available to you. Or if you're really good at sculpting a face, you can even start with a sphere if you like. If you are one of those guys that already have a pretty perfect face typology lying around, you can actually skip the next two steps. And if you didn't, most likely you would have to dynamize your model to have enough resolution to sculpt face details. In that case, you will need the next two steps. So the next step is to retypologize your face. For my character, I ended up having to delete the loop around the eye and around the mouth to create better typology. My old typology was not able to give me that fine crease that we always see around the corner of the eye and the mouth. I started with a half a decent typology, so those are the only thing I needed to fix. But if you actually was using a Dynamesh to sculpt, you will have to retypologize the entire face. If you were like me that had to fix your base mesh to get a better sculpt, or you started with a dyna mesh that you just had to retopologize the whole thing, you will need this next step, which is reproject all the detail that you sculpted onto this new base mesh. This is an awesome feature from ZBrush where you can get the higher resolution detail from another geometry where the topology is completely different. It doesn't always work perfectly, depends on what kind of geometry you're working with. Sometimes you do need to do some hand fixes, but this does mean that you can basically change your typology any stage of the sculpt. After you updated the face typology, hopefully to a better one, this could be a great time for you to finally give the face some UV. We do that by export level 1 of your current base mesh into whatever UV program that you feel comfortable with. Currently, my main two ways of UV any of my geometry is either inside of Maya or UV layout. Once you give the face a UV you're happy with, how you update it inside of ZBrush is just to import the same geometry back into level 1 base mesh. Then your UV should be updated. There is a reason why I'm keeping my face UV right now at 1 UDIM, and I will explain it later on. Now we finally give this face a some UV, we can move on to the next step, which is Texture XYZ projection. Texture XYZ has become a very popular way to make human faces nowadays, and for a very good reason. These textures are real human skin scanned textures, it will give you a great chance of creating something hyper-realistic. However, the projection process does require you to be very careful and be very patient. And there are quite a few different ways of how you can apply those textures to your own character. I will highly recommend you go on Texture XYZ's own website. There is a tutorial section and they have collected quite a few amazing work from different artists. And you can tell every artist seems to have a little bit different way of how they apply Texture XYZ texture. I would suggest you try out a few different ways and see which way works the best for your own character. So these are the maps that I was able to generate from Texture XYZ that is crucial for the next step. Because I projected the multi-channel map onto my character, I was able to get three different levels of displacement for this face. The first one is a secondary displacement, the next one is a broad displacement, and the last one is a fine displacement map. 
those are the maps that I needed to be able to go to the next step, which is to project those displacement maps inside of ZBrush. It's time to see how those maps will work with our current sculpt. Um, when you're doing this, I highly recommend that create a layer every time you displace a new map. This way, even after you apply the displacement to the actual mesh, you still have the control over how strong you want the displacement to be. For this process, I think ZBrush can only accept one UDIM per Z2. As I understand, if I'm wrong, please correct me. This is the reason why we are keeping the face within one UDIM at the moment. Another thing I want to mention is that the, this step and the step before that, uh, they are not linear steps. Most likely you will have to go back and forth between the projection and displacing ZBrush quite a bit. Sometimes you might think your projection is very clean and pristine, but once you see the actual map inside of ZBrush, you might start to see a lot of artifacts that you will have to go back to projection to fix. It's really a back and forth process until you're happy with the displacement inside of ZBrush. You uh, most likely need to keep sculpting on your face during these steps as well. We want all this new high frequency detail on the face to be able to merge with the underlying anatomy that you were sculpting. This is also the next step I want to mention that is basically refined everything until you are fully happy with the entire face. This stage is basically a mixture of the last two. You will have to do whatever it takes to make sure you get the final face sculpt that you like. You either have to go back fixing projection or you might have to stray sculpting ZBrush and make the details better. After you're happy with everything, we can finally export the face displacement map for rendering. All those work we've done before, it's for this one moment. You can either export a 16-bit displacement map or a 32-bit. Uh, the setting for these two a little bit different, so make sure you research the correct way to export displacement map out of ZBrush. Now we're finished with our displacement map, it's finally time to do some face texturing. The reason why we're doing this after we finish with all the displacement work is because first we need the diffuse map that we projected from texture XYZ as a starting point for our own face diffuse map. The second reason is that the finished displacement map could be a great help to create other supporting maps. I always incorporate it into my roughness map and sometimes diffuse map. I rendered my character using Arnold Standard Shader and I found that with that shader I don't need to create too many complicated maps. All I was using was Diffuse, Specular, Roughness, and Bump. After generating these texture maps, we're finally ready to render our character. Here is the skin shader I have set up for my character. As you can see, there's not that many maps connected to it. And uh, what I have in here is just a HDR and one key light and the backdrop. It's quite simple setup as well. And if I press render, here is my finished character. I hope this is a very helpful video for you. And if you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. That is everything I have for you today. And I will see you in the next one.